Welcome to Your OC Sucks, the weekly podcast where we review and critique the best and the worst fan grade original characters from the My Little Pony fandom. This show is unscripted and unfiltered, so moderate language will be used. As well, this show can be a little heavy on the critique at times. That being said, if you are easily offended, do not watch. If not, feel free to join us for this week's show. This is episode 70 for July 17th, 2015. This week, we are winging it with some of these ponies. We are flying by the seat of our pants with these reviews. There are some scary ponies this week, but hopefully we can give some fruitful advice this week. However, we have a show to do. So, bat to this week's episode. My name is Modified Thunderbirds. I'm the host and show manager. I am joined by... Commander Sparkle, assistant project manager. Medi Bobo, I'm in charge of gathering questions and view interaction. And I'm Smooth Sailing, and I'm the editor. Wonderful. So... Like we always do at the beginning of every episode, we haven't been talking a lot about fan art lately, but we definitely need to on this episode, because we got a whole bunch that Those we need to go over. Holy shit. Uh, oh my. There, there definitely is a lot. Five and a half pages? Yes. It is uh, quite the feat. <laughs> like last week when we were about to record, we we're like, wow, we got a lot of fan art this week. But then we didn't do fan art last week, because the live episode. Yeah. Now we got a whole lot of fan we got to talk about. So hopefully, oh hopefully that was enough time uh, to stall for Smooth so that he could properly give a little bit before we get into it. But, uh... Um, so lined paper. Yeah, you seem to have gotten that's a, a that's a, That's <laughs> uh-huh. a... There's a lot. Like, like Smooth, if you could just show... Just uh, just to show how much, just show all of the line paper art fan art I've gotten since we last had fan art. Just to just to give people an idea of how much, like, uh, I think it, I I stopped counting after like ten, but hey, when you're just when just, it's that good, man, you just got to keep rolling with it. It's just too much. Like, I I don't even know which one to talk about because there's just so many of them. The joke will never die. It, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, to say that at the same time, and then we'll go back to your paperedness. Um, we also got turned into girls, or at least I did, and I'm I I think you guys did too. Yeah, and man, I look freaking adorable. You you, you do look pretty cute. Yeah. And I, yeah. I really appreciate the stream-related fan art, such as uh, the Parriot. This is not how a sword works. Uh, we have the Dungeons and Dragons-themed characters. Our characters, it seems, or yes. at least I assume they're Dungeons and Dragons-themed. Honestly, yeah. I basically only play rogues and stuff. I, I'm, I'm fine with being, I'm fine with being an archer. My, I don't, and now it's another one that's a line paper one. <laughs> Burning away all the line paper in the world. And we also got this lovely palette? one by Jelly Bray, the pile of memories. Which, ah, yeah. this is really well done. It's, it's freaking beautiful. Like, like, like no, I don't no. even know, like... The, like my for, expression for, in all of these, basically. Your your expression is super cute. Also, for for the the only solo one of me though, even, Bray even was like, uh, we were just like, yeah, that that would have fit Medi more, but then there'd be like five with Medi and only two with me, <laughs> and she didn't want me to feel left out. But the crown totally would have fit you way more. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Than me. Oh yeah. I am the king of my own ego. We also have an identity crisis going on. Yox pony. Yasina, Poppy Pallet. Like, five of the seven days, she's basically each of us, and then the last two days, what the hell, personality. <laughs> uh, which, by the way, she has gotten a lot of art, whatever her name ends up being. <laughs> so, uh, w- one piece that Mummify got was the Four Mums by Solaris, which is, like, him with a uh, rarity, and they have, like, a bunch of kids, and I, that, but that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is that beautiful painting <sighs> on the wall. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> Fucking done. Mum's the early years. Fucking done. 
<laughs> Thank you so much for putting that there. Thank you oh so much. God, uh, we got two separate pieces of fan art from Katie Frog two one seven. The first one was a nice little chibi thing with Jigger of all of our characters, which looked very effeminate for some reason, which fucking, fits for Commander. But I fucking love it. <laughs> oh my god! Based off that's my fucking that's my Facebook profile pic yeah. right there. <laughs> but yeah, I really like mine. Yeah, you guys look great. Smooth, I don't know why, to me, looks the most feminine, even though Soren is in a dress. Skirt? I am I am the best. After that, she followed up with a uh, another piece that looks like some kind of weird uh, anime cover. But yeah, she did another piece with uh, uh, everybody here, and including Kikyo. I just love how it has us in... Um counterclockwise order, starting with Mummified, then Commander, then Medi, then Smooth, then Soren. But wait, who's in the middle? I just really like how you three are so happy, and then Medi, you're just kind of, whatever, the world. And I am I just, like, look over my shoulder with a sinister gaze. You look like the antagonist that turned ally from, like, some random Japanese RPG. I look like the bad guy, and it's so cool. Jesus Christ. Because honestly, if... Because honestly, if it, if any of us was the bad guy, it'd be me. Let's be honest here. None of you could... None of you could handle being the bad guy like I could. That is it for fan art this week. Unless anybody else had anything lastly they wanted to talk about beforehand. No, mm, uh, there's, I feel like there's. I mean, there's a lot. That. There's a lot I want to talk about, but there's literally too much fan art. Yeah, there were so many. There were so many fun things and good memories that happened. I really wish we could talk about all of them, but there's not enough time in the day and not enough we do, time in the episode to do things like that. We do that, appreciate every one of them, though. As you probably would have noticed in last week's live episode, I mentioned briefly that I was in the process of moving that this weekend. And now, since I was the last broadcast from the old place, this is the first broadcast from the new place. So uh, I'm still working things out with how I'm going to set up this uh, room that I'm recording in. Uh, there might be a little bit of echo or something that you might hear. It might sound a little bit different. But rest assured that by the time it comes around for next for the following episode, uh, that will be fixed. Rolling the die of fate to figure out who goes next, we have a... We rolled a four, so that means Smooth gets to go first. So, Smooth, tell us all about your good bat pony. Which, by the way, if uh, I never mentioned this, this week we're looking at bat ponies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would have, for most of that intro speech, I was like, man, this could have been just Pegasus. <laughs> yeah. Oops. You, by the way, it's Bat. Um. <clears throat> it, it, was, it was only really with the Bat to the episode. Yeah. I mean, terror, I guess, was sort of. Anyway, this is Nightlight. Um, she, her personality is described as sweet, caring, a bit shy, kind, helpful, Naive, a bit sensitive, kind of like Fluttershy, but with some motherly aspects, and I don't mean motherly as a cliche. <laughs> that made me that made me smile when I saw it because because I remember there were a few episodes back that we were we just had so many that were motherly, and we're just like like really. I mean, like, it's probably we're... specifically referencing that. Exactly, and that made me smile. <laughs> Uh, um, oddly enough, she is actually afraid of the dark, despite being a bat pony, and uh, has a tendency to overreact at things, a little bit clumsy. Um, but she puts others' well-being before her own. She likes the nighttime, despite being afraid of the dark, but she loves the stars, and the moon, and starlight, which, you know... Sources of light to be, to love the night and still not be afraid of the dark, so that makes sense. I like that. Done out done. Currently, she lives at a small town near the Whitetail Woods, but that's not how it always was. When Nightlight was young, 
uh, her parents, her, her mother was a toy maker, and her father was a light bulb maker. Uh, she was born in Niagara Falls and had a good friend named Otto, who lived there as well. But unfortunately, at one point, she had to move away. Now, she didn't, like, really, obviously she didn't want to lose her one friend, and her one friend, Otto, wasn't, was kind of going through some really tough times, some really tough times, and especially with your best friend leaving, that, that's a really bad setup. So, Nightlight decided that she'd put everything into what she could do. She, uh, she got some of the toy stuff from her mother and some light bulb stuff, lights from her father, combined those, and obviously worked really hard, to make for her friend a nightlight. A little thing to keep on every night to remember her by. They're good friends, and they will still be good friends, even if they're many, many miles apart. Aww. Cute. And and when she gave that, um, and when she gave, uh, when Nightlight gave Otto the, uh, Nightlight, Otto pointed out that Nightlight now had a cutie mark. And that cutie mark represents helping ponies who are in a bad point in life and making nightlights for young fillies and colts. Hmm. I like that. That's really sweet. I, I, I like it, but at the same time, I'm not a... Like, the, the, the way that the special talent is, it's sort of... Iffy about it in terms of, like, actual, like, MLP show things, but, like, the story is very good. Yeah. I, I, I really, really like the I story. really like it a lot. It 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 has a, it se- it seems pretty realistic and touching and stuff, but I don't know. I'm trying to see if the, like like how there's any correlation between the two other than with her friend. Well, actually, now that she has moved to this other town and has grown up more, she lives in that small town near the Whitetail Woods, and she works as a child therapist. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And she gives out free nightlights to the fillies and colts. And since she's a child therapist, that that definitely makes it work a bit more. Always there to lend a helping hoof. I feel like it all builds and goes together very well. Like, this is one specific concept that can interlock very well. Like, like when you put your fingers together, like in just that one specific way that you can see no light through when you stare at your fingers. It's just like, this is how they interlock. It's like perfect. Weird analogy, but I I back it. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I think it's a pretty well fleshed out character, honestly. Though, the cutie mark's supposed to represent being able to make night lights. Not only, um, the, not just, like, the metaphorical side of it, but, like, the physical side of it. Uh, it doesn't really look much like a nightlight, though. No, that is the moon with a sleeping cap on. True. And that doesn't really make me think of nightlights. I, mm, it wouldn't make me think of it I can, in general. It, I kind of see, well, flowers with smiley faces on them. To represent being a teacher. It's more of an ambig- or, or ambiguous. This one, this one's a little more on the ambiguous side, and I'm a little iffy about it myself, but I still think it works, and I kind of like it. By the way, speaking of how she looks, I freaking love her color palette. It's a very nice color palette. It's, it's, a it's pretty like, really, color palette. I like it. I, yeah, because, I mean, blue is a very, very common bat, bat pony color. Like, yeah. It's, from what I've seen, it's like gray and blue are like the most common. Blue a little bit more. Yeah, and just really odd. This, th- this does the blue, but does it, it, it like sort of takes it its own direction, does a sl- like slightly different blues and then combines it with the uh, yellow. 
and I think it works pretty well. We also see yellow a lot in bat ponies as accent colors like like this, but I, I really like it. I just really like it. That, that's a very good yellow. Yeah. It's a nice sort of it's a nice like pastel. It's like the moon yellow. The only pr- color I have a problem with like at all is the is the, like the, the wing trim. Yeah. 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 It it seems I'm not sure if it's actually a bad color. It just seems really odd in comparison to the rest of the pony. Yeah, because it's a, it's a lot darker than the rest of it. It it seems almost like way too darker. But isn't comparison. that the point? Oh, of yeah, the no, I, I would agree. Yeah. Hmm? Isn't that the point of the trim on bat ponies, though? Yes, but for some reason it seems a little jarring on this one. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe tone it up a a bit. I assume it won't clash with the hair in the mane, but I might be wrong on that, and it might be why it's so dark to begin with. I just don't like it when too many things of the same colors overlap. Like the problem I kind of have with the Cutie Marks coloration being the same exact colors as the colors in her mane. I like the recycling of colors. It just bugs me when the hair is the same color as the cutie mark because then the tail can just go over and it looks weird. But I guess that's just a little pet peeve. Yeah. I, I, I do... Well, I mean, I wouldn't change the yellow at the very, very least, though. Because that yeah. yellow in the cutie mark is... It, it, it works. I wouldn't mess with it. Yeah, it... The problem with me saying change it is, like, it works so well in both places. I'd oh, yeah. just, like... There's no better color that could work for either of them. And I'm just like, mm. dang it. I'll deal with it. Yeah. I sort of am just trying to fi- trying to see if, like, or figure out what that little line is. Or the, is that a, it's supposed to be a closed eye on the moon? I just, I'm looking at it and I'm just not sure. Yeah, Maybe. Like oh, that. yeah. Yeah, it does look like a closed eye. Oh, the moon sleeping with a nightcap on. It's. I can see it, it, it now. Looks a, it looks a little bit weird. No, I can. I I can beautifully see it now. Generic medi critique. Get rid of the outlines on your cutie mark. I like her mane and tail design, and I freaking love that the colors are below. It's good. I like it. Oh yeah. I like this pony, and she looks freaking cute. By the way. Well then, thank you. Smooth for bringing on that pony. Next, we gotta move on to the next pony. So, uh, another roll of the die of eight shows a three. So, that means we get to go with Medi's OC this week. So, Medi, show us what you got this week. Alright, this is Captain Gizmo. Captain Gizmo is a pirate pony. Uh, her cutie mark, even though you cannot see it, is described here. It is a screwdriver crossed like a Jolly Roger. She got it when she was really young, when she was uh, when she wound up building music boxes and more complex things. And as she, as she grew, she, her inventions grew with her. Uh, you also may notice she's wearing an eye patch. Uh, that's because she did lose one of her eyes in a battle. But it but they don't dwell on it too much, which is one thing I really like. Is that it seems plausible and it's not like super over the dark. It's just. You're a pirate, it happens, you're gonna get into fights. Her favorite foods are mangoes and cherries. However, cherries are more of a, are super rare in the Marabia. I swear to... <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. And being a pirate, she's being uh, hunted down by the Imperial Guard. So her, uh, her crewmates... Are all hiding away in grit, in great bit, in. Not as good. And uh, she also has her wing commonly draped over her like a cloak. Wait, 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 wait! That, that those the. You telling me that that's her wing? <laughs> I believe so. Yes. The this is big gigantic wing. <laughs> a pretty big wing, yeah. The fucking massive. It's not even big, it's fucking huge. Yeah, those are absolutely gigantic. <laughs> it looks cool, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it looks cool. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about it being a wing. Now, the thing about this yeah. OC that I really like 
is that even though it it can easily be an AU and stuff, but it just feels like this character doesn't do too much wrong. It just they're a pirate, and that sometimes pirate's life is rough. And that you can imagine, I can actually see this character make being uh, a special guest character on this show, like maybe a show themed around pirates. Yeah, I could totally or, see that. Also, an episode. Also, just gonna mention there is an arc in the comics about pirate ponies. I know. <laughs> yep. I I can. So assume it's not some, totally unheard yeah, of. I can assume something like this would be in that. I still have not it's, read it. It's possible so I can't to be really in the say that, but I feel like that's a really solid story. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, aesthetics wise, I think this OC is great. I also like how she is very show style, but changing it up just a tad bit. Like her ear is not the traditional bat pony ear. Squiggle that. I'm trying to understand that squiggle. Um, I, I assume it's fluff. Yeah. I assume it's just a little bit. Oh fluff. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I could. Uh, and I know we pointed out her wing is massive, but I think it fits because it looks like a cool fucking cape. And I'm yeah. okay with it. It, it. it looks cool. It's incredibly impractical. And, eh, I mean, we haven't seen anything with gigant, gigant wings. So well, I mean, we had Scootaloo yeah. last week. Shut up. That was a dream. <laughs> and I also like how her eye patch. I, I just really like the color of her eye patch for some reason. It fits. It's not like they didn't go with a black eye patch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I kind of like that, because I feel like black would have been just a much darker gray for this already gray horse. I feel like making it brown was a wise decision. She just looks so happy, too. She likes being uh, a pirate. I don't think she looks... I was gonna... Happy is not the word that I yeah. would use. Content, I would use devious. Maybe. She looks she very looks, devious. She looks kind of content, at least. I don't know, I see happy. She seems... I, I definitely something. Her color scheme is also nice. I like it a lot. Nice. She's got a good aesthetic. Pretty baller. It's a, it's a pretty good red. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really good red. I can imagine, like at night, her eyes glow in the dark, or her eye glows in the dark. Ah. Uh, having the red as the eye was a really good decision in making it pop out. A lot in yeah. Oh, it definitely pops. Pop, pop. It definitely pops. I think this OC is adorable, and I am. Um, that's all I really have to say about it, really. Cool. Well then, thank you for bringing that one on there, mate. We now get to move on to the next pony in our lineup. Uh, rolling the die fate, we get to roll a. We get to roll one. So that means uh, I get to go next. Okay. So. I brought this week Paper Stars by Rain Amy. Uh, Paper Stars is uh, an unknown age, presumably a young adult, and her talent is she is a wish maker. Uh, she she's a very quiet pony. She's very reserved, uh, and she's kind of like shrouded in mystery. It's kind of like a far off woodsy tale that revol- that kind of revolves around her. Um, it says that she lives in a small cottage in the Everfree, and that if you walk into the forest at night, and you're like, you know, have quote-unquote good intentions with the goal of finding her, she will appear magically before you and grant one wish. And then it's like, oh, on the, you know, you just can't tell anybody where she is. Well, if you go back on that wish, or back on that promise not to tell anybody where she is, uh, it actually, like, reverses your wish. And the whole thing about her wishes is that she doesn't necessarily actually grant wishes like, hey, I want a million dollars, poof, there it is. It's more of being able to tilt the favor in, or tilt luck into the pony's favor in getting that thing that they want. It's not just like magical, you know, out of nowhere. And if, like I said, if you back... It's like a, it's like a nudge. Yeah. More... More than a nudge, just like a strong push. A, a, a push like a, is, is like a scooch. Uh, she had to flee to the every forest because someone didn't keep their promise. 
And when she was in there, she actually lost uh, her left hind leg to Timberwolves. And she ended up meeting up with a zebra to help heal the uh, leg. Um, yeah. Because otherwise she probably would have died. Yeah, like she was able to recover but not heal the leg, which is rather unfortunate. But, hey, don't fucking tell people where she is and this shit won't happen. What do you guys think? I'm going to start off with something I like. Uh, I like that uh, zebra, it's like zebra and the Everfree. It's, don't specifically say whether or not it is Zakora, which I'm totally okay with because it's like... It's probably Zakora, like, uh, but... It's probably Zakora, I'm actually, but... I just, I'm leaning on the side that it's not Zakora, actually. Like, I like that yeah, ambiguity. Yeah. I mean, technically it doesn't matter if it's Zakora or not, so I'm glad that wasn't stated. Yeah, because, I, I mean, it, it just seems... Yeah, it's not like it, it, for the purpose of me. yeah for the for the purpose of writing out a character sheet. Like if you were writing like a story and it is a core, it's like whatever. But for the purpose of this, I like the way it was done for that. Yeah. On the opposite side, I'm not sure how I feel about her talent. Not because it's just like like how she got this talent. What, why? Like how she got this talent? What makes her so special to be able to literally like <sighs> fuck with fate? Well, you can kind of make a leap a little bit into how or why this is a special talent for her. Because if you know anything about Paper Stars and general origami or whatnot, that there there's a rumor, there's a lot of rumors floating around about how, or not rumors, but more superstition, that if you make a thousand paper cranes or you make a thousand paper stars and you keep them in a jar you'll get a wish, or some, uh, you'll be granted one wish. And there's, maybe there's something to do with she's always making paper stars, so she's able to give wishes well, or something, it, I don't know. It, it does, because uh, I didn't know that about paper stars, and I'm, that's that's really cool, because that makes the name make, st- the name make sense. She it, Like, you see in her hoof, or between her hooves, there are paper stars. And... I, what is the cutie mark exactly? Is there anything with it? Because it's obscured, and I can't quite tell, so I... I can only assume it's, like, a couple of paper stars and the thin strip you use to make paper stars. I can see that. That's pretty much about it for backstory. Let's talk about aesthetic. Um, we've had on the show a couple of times uh, ponies who have rainbow manes that... What was the one that was the super bright white palette that was very... Uh, uh, water, water paint esque. You don't fucking remember. <laughs> it's like Spectrum or something like that. There's so many of them have Spectrum, man. I don't know. I think it was the KP episode Not... we did, but that one had a great so. main because it. We said that it diverged from like the typical Rainbow Dash, uh, Rainbow main, and this one it too. I feel nice. is the same way. Yeah. Yes. So this it's, one it's over all, that like, one. This one's more replicable. You can actually make it again. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. kind of on the it's kind of on the difficult side in comparison to <laughs> it's, Rainbow it's, Dashes, but it's not as difficult as that other one. It's yeah. definitely not a simple main. Yeah. But yeah. I, I like the choices of colors. I think like they all fit together pretty really well and, while not being the exact same colors of Rainbow Dash's main cuz people fall prey to that all too often. She's pretty good. I like this main. Along with yeah. her general coat. Like, I love the, like, strawberry the cream, creamy strawberry coat color. It's so good looking. Yeah, it no, I definitely... With the main. I like it a lot. I, I, I like all of the colors on this pattern. Yeah. Those eyes. God, those eyes. They just lure you I, in, man. It, it's very, uh, like, I mean, I don't know how off, how common that style of eye is. I don't see it that often, but I think it works very well for this character. Also, this pony is super fluffy. She looks fluffy and, like, soft. She's super cute. I want to pick her up and squeeze her. Very. Also, um, I know we already kind of touched on the mane, mm-hmm. but I, uh, like, going back, not not in terms of color, but just sort of general design, I find it really interesting the way that, that the mane is designed, because you have, like, some of, like, on the insides uh, on the mane and tail, some of it's the thicker, like, like gray-black outlines, and then some of them, there's no divide between the colors, and they just sort of, they it's just the, the them, like, up next to each other, 
And I it, like I wouldn't. I'm not sure how I would normally feel about it, but I think they pulled it off actually really well. Yeah. Not to mention that there's uh, there's more depth to it. Like also on the back of the back of her mane below her ear. In situations, they sometimes jam two colors into one section. Well, in this area, they have two sections that have yellow in it. And I thought that was kind of cool. Where it's like, normally it's like, okay, here's a color and here's a color in this section. Here's one color in this section. Or maybe here's a couple of colors in this section. Not two colors in two separate sections. Which I thought that was also... One, you mean one color in two separate sections? Uh, yes, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> but... Yeah, no, like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of that, actually. Since that's the only one time it happens, and it's just kind of odd in comparison. I find myself interested in the lore behind this pony. I just wish there was a little bit more as to how she came about. Now, that could just be because of the fact that uh, she is kind of shrouded in mystery herself, so maybe there isn't that much lore, but that could be something else. Um, yeah. Kitty Mark's story would still be really cool. Yeah, how she got a Kitty Mark? How Equestria was made, yo? That, 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 that's that's probably that's probably the thing that I'm I'm most interested. In. Yeah. But other than that, I think it's a really great pony. So, moving on to the final OC for good OCs, we're going to take a look at what Commander brought to the party. The OC that I brought this week is Bottled Wishes. Uh, she has the nickname of Wishy, and like the. Apparently, like uh, the name has to do with like uh, her, like falling like sh- actual like shooting stars and like falling how she fi- like her job it has to do with fixing falling fallen stars, which involves the bottle around her neck, um, uh, around the around the age of the uh, main six and all that. Um, the hair color is actually the, the natural hair color is just the purple, which I'll get to the yellow and why it's there in a moment. Um. The cute mark is a bottle with the stars. Uh, she, I wish she, like, oh, I will admit that I wouldn't quite get this from the art, but, uh, for her personality, she's pretty much only really gives a shit if it's, uh, like, when, like, about things that specifically interest her. Like, if, like, you, if, like, you bring up something that she likes, she'll just ramble about it. And, but if you approach her and you're like, hey, here's something that she's kind of like, eh, about, she'll pretty much just not even pay attention to you until you, like, yeah, yeah, sh- she's Medi. <laughs> but, uh, she'll just not pay attention until you, the topic gets changed to something she cares more about. She's also some, a bit of a hothead and, like, has a hard time actually listening and paying attention to others, which makes her come off as rude, which she kind of is, because that is kind of rude. Rude. <laughs> rude. Um, but she, she's, she doesn't take things too seriously. She treats life rather lightly and just laughs at, pro- off, l- ra- laughs problems off instead of really, like, looking for solutions to things and also has a hard time admitting that she's wrong. Um, but when she, when it push comes to shove, she, like, it, she is there for her friends and is, like, actually pretty, like, happy and energetic, I'm assuming, when she actually cares. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, apparently she she really likes tea, which I eh, tea whatever. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, well, Zena Lolly. Tea time would like. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I'm sorry, Zena Lolly. I just don't like tea. Um, the like sour food, and likes astrology just for the whole like the myth in like the mythos of astrology and finds yeah. it interesting. Which I mean, yeah, I like whatever. I mean, yeah, I I think it's cool. Um, and likes the night, obviously, and cooler weather, which, I mean, the night is usually cooler, so, yeah. Uh, she's, uh, also, <laughs> she also d- dislikes, uh, overly sweet things, like drinks and foods, and, uh, like, science stuff, so, <laughs> she wouldn't get along with us. <laughs> yeah, she, she uh, would only get along with Medi, and by that I mean neither of them would talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're probably not interested in the same things. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, uh, pretty much, so back to the, really quickly, I'm going to touch on the, like, main thing, so, that yellow that you see in her main, that's stardust, that has accumulated and permanently, like, dyed her hair from, uh, when she's going to, like, like, when she's gathering stardust in pieces from fallen stars, Sick. which is, like, her job. And, like, I guess after doing it for so long, it just, and it's just 
Stardust is probably just some weird thing, and it is dyed her hair, and now there's a gradient. Which, I mean, I doubt that if you actually did that, that it would turn into a nice gradient like that, but I still really like that. I think it's a cool way of explaining it. Yeah. Well, I mean, her hair is growing still, so it would it's make true. more sense that the outermost parts are more Stardust affected. However, I can promise it would still not be that clean of a gradient, yeah. or even close. But... It, this is a fictional pony character, so that's yeah. excusable. That is, yeah. that is like whatever. Uh, whatever. Is that thing? There's, that, there's that word, like you suspension of disbelief. Him. That's 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 three words. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, like going now for some backstory and stuff. Oh, man, uh, yes. When she was like a young filly, her mom loved to uh, would often read her books and stuff about like shooting stars and how they would, like, fall to the ground, like, when they're out of sight and break apart because they're very fragile and actually would break it even just, like, the slightest touch. I don't know how they made it through the atmosphere, but... <laughs> uh, and apparently this book talked about a family of bat ponies who were tasked with gathering the broken pieces and putting them back together to create more new stars, which they'd put in the sky uh, by Princess Luna. Uh, it's not like the Ed's Wishies family are not. Uh, spoilers for the next part. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, growing up, Wishy was influenced heavily by this story, and then would wear, like, wear tons of star-shaped things, like, and accessories, and would pretend to be the star bat pony from the story! Spoilers, she did become that. <laughs> and for the Cutie Mark story, uh, when she had sort of, like, grown a little bit older, and, like, pro like after this has already been a huge influence on her life, uh... Told her about how the bat pony or the bat pony family in the story was her family. Yay! Yay. You so, spoiled uh, the story too much. I can't enjoy it. God damn it, Commander! Well, that's uh, fuck you, smooth. <laughs> <laughs> and how now that she was old enough to take the test to, or or, or she was now old enough to take the test to see if she could actually do that job. Um, yeah. So pretty much like as she when she was a filly. Uh, she lived with, like, her mom and then a few other, like, like mothers and their children, and they didn't really leave the house or, like, the yard, which is apparently kind of, like, how actual bats are, which I, th which I find that, uh, like, a cool little thing. And the, this test then consi uh, was, like, to go outside and gather stardust and, like, try putting them together to make a new star. And since it's very, like, they're super delicate, it's something that not everyone can do. And you have only one night to do it. Uh, which uh, I uh, she she passed the test with flying colors and got her cutie mark, um, and then now she uh lives or she's left the house and all that and lives in uh, a town that is not specifically described, but w uh, with a a good friend of hers and she fixes the stars in that town and then uh, often would go and uh, at late or uh, during the night would go out and get like teas and. There, that increased her comp her concentration from her friend's uh, tea shop because her, her friend I guess owns a tea shop, and she doesn't have that many friends though. But like, I'm assuming she is really good friends with the one she does have because <laughs> if they're able to stick around with uh, with all the bullshit of like yeah whatever, <laughs> probably a good friend. I really like this character. It's a like man, you always bring on like the most like fleshed out backstories. They just seem like they're. They're very well thought out. Yeah, they're just <laughs> what they're, draws uh, me to characters yeah. for the most part. I mean, oh, this is the same person who did the uh, tea person I had on a while ago. Okay, anyway, um, wait, is that the tea one? Yeah, that's the tea one. The cotton cloud, cotton. No, I mean, is that the pony in this story? Are they friends? I don't know. Ooh, is that? The is it mentioned, one? Commander? Well, I mean, it, it's it says cotton dove. Is cotton dove the, that pony? Cotton dove. Yes. Then yes. Yeah, high five, Commander. Yeah. Um, cute. Super fucking Seriously. cute. Seriously, this person's art style is just adorable, and it works really well for this pony. And the accessories, they, 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 they there, there's quite a few accessories with the little stars and stuff yeah, like that, I'm and then. Not a fan of those. I am a fan because they make this pony. But I really like them. I think they're cute, and they work. I can't be mad at that kitty mark anymore. I mean, like, season five is running this show. Oh, God, Mitty, get off. Get off your high horse. Ser seriously, I, I really like the, the colors in this pony, though. Yeah. It's great. Purple and the yellow. Purple and yellow go really well together, and I like 
the purples and the yellows here. Uh, final words, I think that the character was really flushed out, and I like all the colors and the aesthetics, and I, I mean, I don't really... There's nothing about this character that I really don't like.